Hello and welcome to another Big Bash show for the KFC T20 Big Bash League season 2011-2012. My name is Shura Taft and of course on this show we go through everything Big Bash related. We also get to the tweets that you guys at home want to ask our resident expert and I speak of him right now from The Age. Please welcome Jesse Hogan again. Jesse, how are you doing? Alright, thank you. Now of course we have reached the climax, the pinnacle of the Big Bash League yep. season. The big final of course, the two semis last week between the Scorchers and the Stars and of course the Hurricanes and the Sixers. How did you see it? Well, obviously, I thought we were going to have a, uh, a Melbourne and Sydney final. I was, you know, half wrong, but, you know, at least of half, half there, I'll try and, you know, salvage some sort of pride from that. But no, the Scorchers, you know, deservedly had the home final, proved too good in the final, just having too many runs on the board. And again, it was that crucial, you know, Herschel Gibbs at the top, dropping him early. He just came on and gave them a score that was too imposing. And then in the second game, for all the Hurricanes of you know, relied on Travis Burton and Oe Shah throughout the tournament. They couldn't rely on them, um, you know, in the, in the semi-final as well. And I know there was, you know, a bit of dissatisfaction among the crowd that Shah and Burton didn't manage to do it in the semi-final, but I think that's really unfair. I think they really virtually dragged the Hurricanes to the final, did all they could. And in the end, the Sixers were just too good, especially their sort of very disciplined bowling. It was great to see them there. Yeah, it's fair to say that Travis Burton, Oe Shah probably has some <laughs> sore shoulders from carrying that <laughs> yeah. team. And you can't have any problems about it. I mean, they've got them there. Um, but unfortunately Hobart falling at the last hurdle, so it's going to be a huge final. Scorch, I have to say, there was probably, with the Stars game, there were some interesting decisions, obviously the drop mm. catch there, but also perhaps Jackson Berber bowling that last over. He went for a few runs, Mitch Marsh, putting him over the fence. Yeah, I can. Uh, I really like Jackson Berber, especially in long form cricket. I think he can play for Australia sooner rather than later, but he's only played, I think, this is probably his fifth or sixth P20 game, and it was a big call to put him there, and uh, well, it does show a lot of promise. So. Maybe you would have been better off giving someone who maybe took a bit of pace off the ball. Mm, tough on the kid indeed. Well, there you have it. So we know who the finalists are going to be after the two big semi-finals. It's the Perth Scorchers and they're hosting at home. That's the big key, isn't it? Mm. They're at home at the Wacker and they're hosting the Sydney Sixers this Saturday night. It is going to be an absolute belter. All right, throughout the Big Bash League season, we've been asking the question, who's hot and who's not? And after the two big semi-finals, it's time to ask the same question of our resident expert, Jesse Hogan. Jesse, who is hot this week? I think it's got to be the, the two batsmen at the top of the, um, you know, the winning semi-final teams, Nick Maddinson and Herschel Gibbs. Herschel Gibbs has been doing it through the whole tournament. He's been amazing. And I guess subsequently, it's made even more impressive by the fact that apparently he's carrying a pretty bad heel injury and has requiring a bit of treatment for that. But he, his scoring rate's just amazing against the slow bowlers and the pace bowlers. Gave the score to a great target, which couldn't be chased down. And for the Sixers, Nick Maddinson, I mean, he's been touted probably for the past year as an Australian prospect. Had a very slow start to the season in sort of four day and one day cricket. But now in the Big Bash has actually managed to find a bit of form, similarly to Chris Lynn from the Brisbane Heat. So I guess long term, um, you know, that's a good thing for Australia. And in the short term, it's certainly a good thing for the Sixers. Mm, I'd say special mention to Mitch Marsh as well. I thought that was absolutely awesome hitting down the order. Now, whose performance didn't quite reach the uh, standards there in the last game? Oh, you, you'd have to say Bert and um, O.A. Shah, but as I mentioned before, I don't think you can sort of ha have that as any sort of slight on them. They were superb throughout the whole tournament. Both should be, you know, in the all-star team. They were both amazing. Um, probably, I think, one of the unfortunate things, if you look to the, towards the Stars chase, you had Cameron White there in the end, and I know he's sort of been a whipping boy throughout the tournament, but you saw he had that six down the ground. He hit another full where he almost got caught, and you just thought... He, he's sort of almost playing for his immediate career here. And then the next ball, he tries it, and then um, he just gets caught. And you could even see with the ball just before him where he didn't get caught, the ball, the bat sort of twisted in his hands, and it's still just not quite there for Cameron White. And of course, it's been compounded by losing the national T20 captaincy. So it was really an unfortunate end to what's been a really bad campaign for Cam. And in, uh, in short, in your opinion, will Cameron White play for Australia again in the T20 team? Uh, I think he will. Yes. He will. Okay, there you go. He'll find his form again. There we go. That's who's hot, who's not, as we look towards the big final. So each week on the Big Bash Show, we give you guys at home the chance to tweet in any questions you might have for our resident expert, Jesse Hogan, and he's going to do his best to try and answer them as well. These are the tweets of this week. The first one is from at Yoti Vam, who says, what would be one change you'd make to Big Bash League season for next year? Probably the one thing that I think needs a bit of tweaking is the final system, and I know it sort of worked out this year with the Perth Scorchers finishing on top and actually getting the Champions League spot, which is so crucial because it can be millions of dollars for a team like that. 
I think it would have been really unfair if you have the situation which sort of exists at the moment. If you have a team that go through maybe losing one or even no games, gets to the semi-final, might be rain affected, or might have its first bad game for the tournament, can lose and then just be out of contention. So I'd prefer to see a system where if you have the same number of finals, either that the first Champions League spot goes to the person, the team that has the top spot, and then to the team that wins the final, if the first team wins both and you give it to the runner-up, or another option that's been actually floated by some players on Twitter is saying you actually have a, fi a first final, one versus two. The winner goes straight into the final. Um, the loser actually plays the winner of three and four, and then you have the final there, which actually means an extra final. So I'm sure Cricket Australia would be happy about that. It's just a matter of actually whether they can fit it in. So I think one of those two options to the finals, a slight tweak would be better for next season. I like your thinking. There are definitely some in incentive to finish yep. on top and obviously have a great season. Great tweet there. All right, our second tweet comes in from at Steve Ferg, who says, do you think India should let their players play in the BBL so they can get used to the conditions? Of course, that's quite mm. interesting at the moment, considering what's going on in the test. It, it, it is. I think probably the one thing, though, is that I'm not sure how much you can adjust in sort of in 2020 over matches. I think if they really seriously wanted their players to adjust, they'd be trying to get them down, you know, the A-teams down here to play academy games or something like that. Uh, it would be, a, I think just for a spectacle-wise, it'd be great to see some Indian players down here because even outside the national team, there are some fantastic players as you get to see every season in the IPL. But I think that IPL is probably the reason why we won't see it happen in the near future because the Big Bash is really just sort of starting on its big expansion phase here. India, probably f quite fairly pretty protective of its IPL and I don't think they'd be wanting to be seen to giving the Big Bash a free kick. So I could be proven wrong, but I wouldn't be holding my breath to think that Indian players, even those outside the national team, would be allowed to come down and play here. All right, great thoughts there. Thank you very much for that, Jesse. And thank you very much for your tweets. Remember, if you want to tweet anything in, you can go on Twitter and use the hashtag Big Bash Show because there is one more show left after we review the big final. Make sure you jump on Twitter and send your questions in to Jesse. Well, that's it for another week here on The Big Bash Show. Thank you again for you being here, Jesse, and giving us all your opinions and thoughts. And, of course, we'll be back doing the review of the big final. And that is what is coming up this Saturday night. It is the Perth Scorchers taking on the Sydney Sixers in the big final. We've been waiting for this. The whole season's been played out now, and we're very much looking forward to it. Of course, tickets sold out in half an hour, Jesse, so it's going to be an absolutely huge mm -hmm. game. Of course, it is at the furnace. It's going to be 42 degrees. As it is for a furnace, yeah. It's going to live up to its name, there's no doubt. Now, if you're not going to be at the game, remember you can catch all the live scores at bigbash.com.au or you can watch it on Fox Sports or on the Cricket Live app on your smartphone. It's going to be absolutely huge. Good luck to both those teams. Don't forget, you can still tweet in. Uh, get Jump on Twitter and use the hashtag Big Bash Show with any questions or thoughts you might have. But until then, good luck to your teams if they are in the big final and we'll see you next week for a wrap-up of the Big Bash final.